Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to create a VM or a virtual machine using Microsoft's Hyper-V virtualization platform. Now, this you could install on Windows servers and also if you have uh, Windows 10, if you have Professional or Enterprise Edition, so on, you could install it on that and that's what actually we're running. So once you install the role, you go into your Hyper-V manager and you should have your local computer there. If not, you could right click and connect to server and pick your server. But for us, we have it there. So to make a new VM, we do the right click on our server and go new virtual machine, or we could go new virtual machine here. And then next, let's do another Windows 10. So we'll call this Windows 10. So now for us, since we don't want to install it on our C drive, because we don't have enough room, we're going to browse to where we have our other, other virtual machine files located. And that's on the D drive under Hyper-V VMs. And so that's what we want. And we'll select folder. And there it is there. You can also type it in if you like. Next. And then for the generation, generation one or generation two, since we're using a newer version of Windows and it's only 64 bit, we're going to click this option to get the best features. If you're using like Windows XP, you know, or uh, like an older version of Linux or some 32-bit operating system, you can pick that. Click Next. Uh, for memory, this is how much RAM you want to give it. It kind of picks something by default there, which is usually not enough. But since we're only going to do this for demonstration purposes, we'll leave it at this one gig. And if you choose this option, when you boot up the computer, it'll allocate memory as needed. So if it needs some more RAM, it'll start using it on its own over what you give it here. So it's up to you to decide if you want to do that. If you have the physical memory in your computer to spare, you always turn this off later. So we'll just leave that on for now. And then you need to connect to a network adapter. By default, there's a default switch there. But if you play with the networking and add other switches, you'll have them listed here in the dropdown. So we'll click the default switch. And so here's the name of our hard drive. Here's the location of our virtual disk. And then for the size, it, it recommends um, a size for you. We'll just do 25 just to keep it small. And if you have another existing virtual hard drive, you could connect to it by clicking this option and browsing to it. Or if you don't want to add a virtual hard disk, you could skip it and then add one later on. But of course, you're going to have to add one to install Windows or whatever operating system on there. So we'll go with the create the virtual hard disk option now. And then for the operating system, either do it later or in our case, we're going to browse to an ISO file for a Windows 10 installation. And there it is there. Or if you have a network uh, based installation server, which says images on there, you could use that option. OK, so we're going to click on Next. And here's our summary. The name, the generation, how much RAM, what network switch we're connecting to, the hard disk and where it's located, and what we're doing for the operating system. So we'll just click on Finish. It's creating the virtual machine and doing all the configuration. And now, as you can see, we have it here. So now we're going to connect to it and then start it. And then press any key to boot to CD. And there you go. We'll just go through your Windows installation like normal. One thing I've noticed, if you're not fast enough pressing the uh, any key to boot from Windows, it'll try and uh, use a boot P uh, boot method. So you just have to come up here and do control alt delete while you have the console screen here. And then that way you can reset it and then press the key to boot from the CD. So other than that, you just go through your installation. And then when you're done, you'll have another one here. And then you could just turn it on and off and use it just like any other one of your VMs. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.